Maharaj, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Gurudev. We have 21 devotees online eagerly waiting to receive wonderful transcendental nectar from your lotus mouth. You should write, you should be a, a, a Toastmaster General in a way you introduce. I think you could get paid for it too. <laughs> we are so happy to see you, Guru Maharaj. I'm a little late. Sorry about that. Something happened. <laughs> okay. So we'll begin. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadara Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vindam Yadpada Pallav Yugam Vindinaya Kumbam Dwande Pramari Samaye Saganadi Raja Bignam Vihantu Alamasya Jagatrayasya Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Vajami. It is by holding the lotus feet of Lord Nishringadev that Lord Ganesh has acquired the ability to remove the impediments of the three regions of the material world, upper, middle, and lower. And that is why Lord Ganesh is considered to be Siddhi Data, the giver of success. In the material context, Lord Ganesh removes the impediments. In the spiritual context, Lord Nishringa moves, removes the impediments. Once the impediments are removed, then success becomes easy. Bhakti Vinod Thakur gave a Nishringa mantra to his illustrious son, which later became Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, when he was a young boy. And because of that, his whole life was free from impediments <laughs> as he became the great Acharya. Srila Prabhupada also took, told us how important it is to take shelter of Lord Nishringade. When we take shelter of Lord Shri all impediments in our spiritual life are removed and we can achieve success in our endeavor. All right, I'm sorry for interrupting. Would your holiness kindly lower the screen just a little bit, please? Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm going to speak a little bit about the wonderful devotee named Pankajangri, who was in the Sringadev Pujari. And Pankajangri, throughout his time as the Pujari of Lord Nishringadev, he was the main one, had many, many examples or many, many incidents where devotees would come to him with stories about Lord Nishringadev. It's amazing how many of these stories happened in our ISKCON society, especially in Sri Mayapur. Actually, uh, Pankin Drangi Prabhu has written one little booklet uh, narrating all these different stories. And I'm going to read a few and speak a little bit. He tells one story where he called over one lady in a, in a crowd. She was just there in the crowd. And he just happened to notice her and he called her over. And 
And he said, can you distribute the Lord's Charinamrita to the ladies? Later, when she was finished, she brought the Charinamrita to pot back. She remarked that Lord Nishriya Dev was very merciful to reciprocate so quick, quickly. She said, I was praying this morning that I might be able to offer some direct service to him. And now you have given me this service. Monka Janga responded, yes, in the Dham, the uh, desires are fulfilled uh, the same day. He said, just see, the same day you desired it happened. She said, no, not the same day, the same moment. <laughs> The very instant that I expressed a desire to serve him, you called me over. Wow, that's amazing. In the same minute, when she he called her over to do the service, she had just finished the prayer, asking Lord Nishingadev for some service. It was a particular lady who had an eye problem and her eye problem was cured the same time Lord Nishringadev's eyes were originally placed back. One donor had bought new eyes for Lord Nishringadev, and they were his old eyes were traded for these new eyes. But Lord Nishringadev didn't like those new eyes <laughs> for some reason. And uh, so when the original eyes were placed back, the Lord had given some indication he didn't want those, those eyes. Her eye problem, the lady who actually um, arranged for Lord Nishringadev to get his eyes back, her eye problem was immediately cured. Another lady was telling Pankajangi, I was standing in front of Lord Nishringadev's altar and I was suffering so intensely. I couldn't even stand without supporting myself on the column in front of the altar. I pray to him, please help me take this suffering condition away so I may serve you completely. Then she tells, then as soon as I finish my prayer, I felt my whole, all my pain moving up and flowing out of my body, and it just was gone. <laughs> there was another lady who. Uh, came to ask Uncle Jungri for advice. She had been afflicted for two weeks with a problem, which wouldn't allow her to do some deity service to the deities in Assam. And she had been given the service and an air ticket to come and do the work. He said, well, Go over to Lord Nishringadev and pray to him. The next morning when she saw me, she said, thank you very much for your advice. You know, when I arrived home from the temple yesterday, my problem had completely disappeared. Another mother, Mataji came to the Pajaro and told us about a dream where Lord Nishringadev walked and talked with her just like a father. When she asked how could she serve him, he told her to offer him some mangoes. About a week later, she bought mangoes for offering, gave it to Janani Vas, telling how fortunate she was that Lord came to her in a dream and told her and was walking with her. And then the lady said, this is interesting to hear. Now, this is, this is really amazing, this part here. The lady said, actually, there's more to the dream than what I previously told you. 
Lord Sringadev also said to me, my Pujari is very dear to me. I'm going to take him back with me. That was referring to, Jana, uh, to Panka Jangri. And so this lady responds to Lord Nishringadev in the dream, no, oh, don't do that, please. She was very afraid. Please, we want him to stay here. No, then the Lord says, no, I think I will take him back. <laughs> but after pleading with him, with Nishringadev for some time, the Lord announced, all right, and I'll take one of the leaders instead. <laughs> and as you know, just a few days ago, His Holiness Gaur Govinda Swami, uh, Sannyasi GBC suddenly left his body. And then she also said that when she told this story to a friend, this lady says, my wife also had a dream about Lord Distringadeva in mangoes. Yesterday, while she was walking outside the Mayapur campus, she saw a jar of mango pickles in the shop and desired to buy them for Lord Nishringadev. But doubting the purity of the contents, she refrained. However, last night, Lord Nishringadev appeared in her dream and asked her, where are my mango pickles? <laughs> There's one story about one Pujari. He was always reluctant to worship Lord Nishringadev. And he was particularly frightened, always nervous about worshiping him. One night, after Baba Sindhi, Baba Siddhi, put the Lord to rest, he was leaving the altar. When he heard such a tremendous sound that it made his hair stun, and then looking back fearfully, he saw that everything was fine. He left, locked the door, paid his obeisances, prayed for forgiveness if he hadn't committed any offenses. At the end of that night, while he was taking dread, his bed was shaking. Baba Sinda was sleeping on the top bunk of a double-decker bed. And he thought, oh, maybe the pujari below is getting up from Mangalarti. However, when he opened his eyes, he saw Lord Nishringadev sitting on his bed. He became completely fearful, practically to the point of panic. As he tried to get up, Lord Nishringadev placed his two hands, which felt like the weight of the universe, and he said, be peaceful, be calm, the Lord consoled him. I've just come to tell you that when you worship me in a temple, there's no need to fear me. Please give up your fear. The Lord then disappeared. Baba Sindhu began to run up and down the veranda of the long building where he slept. What happened? Asked some devotees, but they couldn't receive any clear reply. They thought he had gone mad and become haunted by a ghost or something. Baba Sindhu ran all the way over to the temple and prostrated himself in front of Lord Nisringa and I'll start offering prayers. After some time, he became a little pacified and he was walking back to his room. And then he explains, everyone was staring at me. When he looked down, the answer was obvious. He was only dressed in his underwear. <laughs> he had completely forgotten to get dressed. <laughs> And then later on, we, he, he was telling the story and he said, those marks, there were two marks that Lord Nishringadev had created when he put his hand on his shoulder and he showed that they were still visible. And that was after, uh, after some time. <laughs> There's one story where about one, one man, he, uh, he was the relative of a devotee. And uh, he was in the hospital and he was quite ill. 
and it looked like that he may soon leave his body. So his devotee relative came to him and explained to him the importance of chanting Hare Krishna and tried to get him to chant. He was listening, but he wasn't at all inclined to chant. So just a couple of days later, that same man was sitting in his room and he saw by the door of his room this unusual figure and he couldn't, he tried to describe it. And in his description, it was Lord Nishringadev's form. And he said that that person, that form, it looked like a lion, but he also looked like a man. He said to me, you should chant that mantra you were told to chant. <laughs> And so after he told the story, he began chanting. And just, recent, just after that, he left his body. <laughs> Here's another story where one lady and her husband, their son, decided to leave home. And he said he was going to go to Mayapur. And so they were heartbroken. Uh, they found no pleasure in life anymore. So they decided to go to find their son. And so they went in front of Lord Nishringadev and started to pray. Of course, before that, they looked, they looked all over the campus they looked everywhere, they could not find their son. And then they came in front of Lord Nushingadev and they were explaining how their heart was broken. They found no pleasure in their life anymore. Their son could not, could not be returned to them. Then she said, I raised my hand and I chanted, Haribo, Hare Krishna. And as soon as these words left my mouth, I turned around and stopped before Lord Nishringadev and I looked and her son was there standing just by her. She was so happy that Lord Nishringadev had returned her son that she actually became a devotee, took initiation and started to preach Krishna consciousness. These are a few of the uh, unlimited stories uh, in that book compiled by uh, Pankajangri Prabhu about the life of uh, devotees' life and how they had simply prayed to Lord Nishringadev for his mercy. And because they did, so this is what is saying here that Lord Nishringadev, when we sincerely pray to Lord Nishringadev, then the Lord is very kind. He's in the mood of a, uh, a benevolent father to his devotees, to the non-devotee demons. He is death personified. <laughs> but to the devotees, he is like a gentle. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. You can't find a word, maybe a gentle feline, <laughs> another he's very gentle, very loving, very kind and very, uh, very inclined to fulfill the desires of his devotees who worship him in devotion. And we can say that this recently, we all know Pankajangri Prabhu, when uh, lost his, uh, well, he, he left his body a couple of weeks ago so we can say that actually it was Lord Nishringadev's arrangement for him to come back home, back to Godhead. He had dedicated his life to serving the Lord in a very wonderful way. So these are a few of the stories of Lord Nishringadev in Sri Dan Mayapur. There are many, many other stories 
and maybe I'll narrate some other ones. If you just give me a little bit of a time here. Hmm. There's some beautiful prayers by Shani Dave. Everybody knows Shani. Shani is the, uh, the Deva who rules the more outer planets like Saturn. So there's these called Sri Sanischara Krika Sri Nishringa Stuti. This is by Shani. Lord Nishringa Dave is easily accessible to the devotees, though he punishes those who are evil minded. He is the savior of those who are helpless and who seek refuge in him. When the demigods of the innumerable planets bow down to his lotus feet, the bright jewels from his crowns are reflected on his toenails, giving the impression that lamps are being waved in front of them. Unto his lotus feet, Shani Dave prostrated and prayed in the court of Lord Rama. Mm -hmm. By the mercy and the dust of your lotus feet, Shani Dave says, which destroys a multiple of sins, please grant infinite auspiciousness to your devotee. Always worships your lotus feet with devotion. Oh, Lord Nishringade, please bestow your merciful sight. Your lotus feet are worshipped by Goddess Lakshmi, even though she is fickle by nature, she is known as Chanchala, by Lord Shiva and by Lord Brahma, whose feet are worthy of worshipping devotion. O oh Lord Nishringade, please bestow upon me your merciful sidelong glance. By contemplating or meditating upon your appearance, which is extremely expounded in the Vedas, the best of the saints are liberated from the threefold miseries and from all misfortune. O oh Lord Narasimhadev, please bestow upon me your merciful sidelong glance. By the word of his devotee named Perlad, Lord Hari, who was generous and kind, appeared from the pillar, and by placing Harani Kashipu upon his thigh, split open his stomach with his nails. O oh Lord Nishringade, please bestow upon me your merciful sidelong glance. You protected your own devotee from a raging fire, from the deep ocean, from falling from a tall mountain, from poison, from a mad elephant, mad elephant, and from the fangs of poisonous serpents. You are omnipresent and supremely generous. O oh Lord Nishringade, please bestow upon me your merciful sidelong glance. By meditating upon he whose great form is devoid of, in, devo, devoid of imperfections, the best of the saints attain liberation from the ocean of material attachments and attain unmitigated salvation. O oh, Lord Nishringade, please bestow upon me your merciful sidelong glance. I meditate upon, upon he whose form is fearsome. All peace, happiness, and prosperity can be attained. All sins can be obliterated. Fear arising from evil spirits, fears, fevers, and unfavorable planets can be re removed. O oh Lord, Nishringade, please bestow upon me your merciful sidelong glance. Mm -hmm. I should mention something. Of course, this is just speculation, but there's a very inauspicious astrological alliance about to manifest in the month of August coming up. So here it says, fearing arise from evil spirits, fevers and unfavorable planetary positions can be removed. O oh Lord Nishringade, please bestow upon me your merciful sidelong glance. So devotees have nothing to fear. Devotees are actually fearless because they take shelter of he who is the controller of all controllers. And therefore, being very kind to his devotee, he always gives shelter and protection to those who sincerely seek his, seek his shelter. 
another prayer. Your transcendental fame and glories are sung in the divine assemblies of Shiva, Brahma, and Indra, and others, other devatas. You whose power is steadfast in wiping out all impurities. O oh Lord Narasingadev, please bestow upon me your merciful sidelong glance. On listening to the heartfelt prayer composed by Shani Dev in the assembly of Lord Brahma, Lord Hari, who is ever compassionate to his devotees, spoke to Shani Dev as follows. Lord Narasingadev said, O oh Shani, I am pleased with your devotion. Whatever you desire that will benefit the world. Ask for that kind of boon and I will grant it. Sri Shani Dev replied, O Nishringa Dev, O Reservoir of Compassion, please be kind to me. O Lord of the Gods, let my weekday, Saturday, or Shani Vara be your favorite day. O Purifier of the Worlds, may you fulfill the desires of all who listen to read this great prayer to you composed by me. Uh -huh. So the Shringa Dave's day is Saturday as he granted the desire of his great devotee, Shani Dave. Sri Nishringa Dave said, oh Shani, let it be so. By virtue of my being the universal protector, Raksabhuvana, I fulfill the desires of all my devotees. Please listen to my words. Let there be no fear of the 12th and the 8th birth positions. And consequent troubles from you, from anyone who reads or listens to this prayer to me composed by you. Then Shani replied to Lord Narahari that he would follow the Lord's instructions. Then the joyful saints and sages present there in the Brahma's assembly responded in cries of Jai. Jai. Sri Krishna told Dharmaraj, whoever listens to or recites this conversation between Shani Dev and Lord Nishringa Dev in the form of this prayer of devotion will definitely have all desires fulfilled and will always rejoice. Thus ends the prayers offered to the universal protector Lord Nishringa Dev by the great soul Sri Shani Dev. says here, this is a footnote, the 12th or 8th birth position. It says, those who chant this prayer composed by Sri Sunny Dev in honor of Lord Nishringadev need not worry about the trials and tribulations caused by, by Saturn either moving in the 8th or 12th houses to the ascendant of the natal moon sign. These are the most feared positions of transiting, 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 transiting so that's a little footnote on these beautiful prayers by Shani Dev, the great demigod in the assembly of Lord Brahma to Lord Nishringa Dev, who responded by his prayers by immediately appearing there. Mm -hmm. Many, many wonderful stories. These are some of the stories. Let me see if I can uh, continue with this uh, narration of some more pastimes. I'll read one, one which is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. It says here again, is Grace Pankajangri told me a few months ago that one Mataji had been suffering a health condition that would not go away for years. When she read about Lord Nishringadev curing devotees, she realized she could pray for him. For this purpose, she did. That happened. Condition disappeared. A few weeks ago, this is done, this is spoken by one devotee called the Moga who resides in Mayapur. 
A few weeks ago, his grace, Janani Vas Prabhu, told me that a married couple could not conceive a child. A year ago, the doctor examined the wife and said that in the past, some disease had occurred and her, her tubes were permanently closed. The couple took shelter of Lord Nishringadev. Just recently, they again went to the doctor who revealed that the tubes are now open, which normally does not happen. And he's, he was happy to say that she was now pregnant. Mother Sham Manohara Sham Prabhu told me that recently there was a massive bushfire in the country of Argentina. They were raging hot winds and the flames were devouring everything in their path. Emergency workers were ev evacuating people from their homes. Mother Sham's mother, uh, Manohamra, I'm sorry, Manoham, Manohar Sham's mother, who worships Nusringit David Mayapur, could see the flames rising 20 feet into the air coming directly towards her home. She immediately went to pray to Lord Nusringa. They were suddenly the wind changed direction and the flames blew away from her home and to another destination. So these are some of the amazing pastimes of Lord the Shrinkadev. There are oceans of others stories that are some of them are some of them are accounted for and some of them are not. In other words, some of them some of them are not allowed to be told. Like a secrecy was given to the devotees that received these stories because they were very personal and didn't want them to be revealed in public. So there are so many more of these wonderful, wonderful stories. Let's see if we can investigate more and deeper into these. Yeah, so there's stories of you know, people praying for him for relieving of diseases and various other things. The Lord is very kind. Here's another story. My father was visiting Ma Mayapur for the divine appearance day of Lord Sri Nishrina Day. While taking prashadam in the prashadam hall, he slipped on some water and twisted his ankle. Four people had to pick him up and take him to Krishna Nagar. The doctor said he won't be able to walk for at least 10 days. When he got back to the temple and in his room, he prayed to the, to the Lord that he had come back, come to Mayapur for the first time. And he had specifically come for the appearance of the Lord. And now he was feeling bad. He, he was going to be bedridden for 10 days. The next morning when he woke up, 80% of his problem was recovered and he was able to walk around. Here's another story. Um, in the early days in, in our center in Hamburg, Germany, our devotees used to go out and chant the holy names. And sometimes we go at night to chant in the most sinful area. What is the most sinful area in Hamburg, Germany? It's called Reeperbahn. So we were chanting in this, that area and then a huge gigantic person, like a big man, and he was previous, previously drunk. Or, well, I didn't know what happened. He came to attack the devotees. This happened back in the 70s. And the devotees were wondering what to do. 
Now, should they run away or should they confront the man? Somebody was even thinking that he will take the cult cartels and swing it. But the leader of the group said, no, just chant in the string of prayer. So they started to chant, Namaste Narasimhaya. And the man was coming charging. And as soon as they started to chant, the shrink of pairs, the, the man came about four or five feet away from them, and some, something happened. His whole body just went up, fell flat on the ground. And in this area, there's only two things available, police and ambulance. So immediately an ambulance came very soon, and, ambul and then people gathered and they checked and they said he, the man had, had just had a, a massive heart attack. There's one story in, um, I think it's in the area which is now having trouble again in Palestine and Israel, they're always fighting. When the body was um, distributing books after the war had ceased for some time and so he had finished his day and he decided to uh, quit a little earlier on that day. And so he decided to just climb one of the local mountains and sit there for a while. So as he was doing that, he was looking out over the city and he could see the area. And he saw one area of the city that was completely bombed out because of the war. So he noted that. And then after some time, he went on home. The next day, he also began his book distribution. And while he was doing that, and he was having a good day, he was collecting a lot. And then uh, it was getting towards the end of the day. Finally, one man came to him and said, oh, what do you have? He says, these are book, books about spiritual life. And he started to explain. The man said, you know, these sounds very interesting. Um, I'd like to take a, you know, one copy of all the different uh, versions, all the different titles you have, but my money is not with me now. So why don't you come with me and I'll give you a, a big donation. I'll give you more than what the books are worth. So the boy was, the devotee was thinking, well, it's the end of the day and man sounds like he's really interested so he decided to go with him so they're walking and the man is talking 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 he doesn't stop talking just talking and the, and the devotees listening and they're walking and walking and walking and the devotees losing track of where they're going he's just following the man and finally they came to that same area which he saw the day before which was the area of the city that was destroyed and there was nothing there there's no people just broken buildings and then the devotee started to think, oh no, this is not right. And then immediately the man took out a knife and was about to attack the devotee. And the devotee just screamed, Lord, the Sringadev. And from nowhere, there was nobody around. A huge, big dog just jumped onto the man, knocked him down. And then uh, the devotee easily was able to get away. <laughs> That's an interesting story how Lord Shringadev saves his devotees. There are many such stories like that. There's one told by Indra Jumna Maharaj where uh, um, Indra Jumna Maharaj was going to this one place. I think it maybe was Russia or one of the Soviet bloc countries during that time. And uh, he was preaching. And he had met this little girl and she became really attached to him. We all know how much Indra Maharaj loves children. So this child really uh, became really attached to him. So he had returned after having been away for so many years. And so now the girl was about 11 years old. And so she came to see her favorite sannyasi again. And she was talking to him and saying, well, you know, I saw Lord Nishringadev. And he was thinking, oh, that's very nice. 
And I saw him too. And then he was just kind of like going along. And her mother was there also. So she said, no, no. Actually, she had an experience where she saw Lord Nishringadev face to face. And she explained. The little girl, when a few years ago, when she was about eight years old, she was walking across the street, not noticing that a car was coming. And the car was going quite, quite a good speed. And it hit the girl and it knocked her flying in the air and she landed on a grassy uh, area and she was unconscious. So uh, immediately they took her to the hospital and the nurses were there and the nurses uh, explained to the doctor what had happened. The girl was unconscious so they said, well, get some x-rays and see what's broken. Mm -hmm. So they took x-rays, brought it to the doctor. The doctor said, no, no, give me the x-rays of this girl. These x-rays are fine, there's nothing there. They said, no, this is the x-rays of the girl that was hit by the car. The doctor was astonished. The girl was completely okay. There wasn't a, a slight bit broken bone in her body. Later on, the girl came back to consciousness and she explained that when I, when she was hit by the car, she felt this, uh, these hands holding her in the air as she was flying through the air. And then later on, she showed that on her shoulder, there were mar nail marks. And she said, yeah, these marks were, these are the marks of Lord Nishringa Dave when he caught me when I was going through the air. So there are many, many amazing stories of Lord Nishringadev, how he appears to his devotees in so many wonderful ways like that. Oh, there's so many nice stories. On April 22nd, 2005, Little Ravati Sundari, age eight, was climbing on the roof of the Bamboo Playhouse in the Grihasta Park in the Maipur Dam. To her great surprise, she fell through the roof, landing on her head, and the roof caved in on top of her. She was in shock for an hour, shaking and crying and incoherent. She also had a concussion. Gore Babu, our homopathic Vaishnav doctor, treated her for concussion and shock. And a few days later, he suggested a scan. After three days, Ravati woke up in the night vomiting black blood. We rushed her off to Calcutta. On the way, clear fluid was leaking from her nose, then violent nosebleeds started. We took her straight to a good pediatrician who immediately called in the top neurologist in the city. He ordered a CT scan and then seeing the results, he sent us to a very good neurosurgeon who owns his own private hospital. The girl was admitted right, right, right away. This uh, liquid coming out of her nose was continuing to leak out. The scan clearly showed fractures in the floor of her brain from which the brain fluid was escaping. Also, her brain was swollen and blood was pooling, causing pressure. She had extreme pain in her head and was which was unabated and continuous since she had the accident. The doctors worked on her for a couple of days, giving her medicine intravenously. Her, the whites of her eyes became totally red. She was like a limp rag. Finally, the doctor said the next morning to do a special scan to determine the injuries and decided that they would operate. So this person phoned Pankajangri explaining the situation and asked him to please pray to Lord Nishringadev. He said he would do full puja between the hours of 5 and 7 a.m., complete with Abhishek and everything else. This was the same time of the scan. The next morning when I met the doctors, they were looking amazed and said that the new scan showed that the injuries were miraculous he almost healed all symptoms such as pain, while the nosebleeds 
brain fluid leakage, vomiting, etc., had been abruptly stopped. Well, and then this person says, when I went to see little Raven T, she was sitting up in the bed looking bright eyed and fresh and her eyes were fully white again. She said, thank you. Thank you, Lord Nishri. Ravati's comment on all this was, Grandma, next time something happens to me, please don't waste time with doctors. <laughs> Just take me straight to Lord Nishinga Dave. Mm -hmm. well, these are some of the uh, compassionate uh, pastimes of Lord Nishinga Dave upon his devotees. And maybe some devotees have who are listening today have had some personal experience with Lord Nishringadev. I think out of all of the deities that we worship, Lord Nishringadev is always there. This is Kali Yuga, and this is the age where there's so many problems, so many dangers. And at the same time, um, the Lord is always inclined to be there for his devotees. But we must sincerely pray and take his shelter. When we do that, then the Lord is very kind. And he's always, he's, he's more eager to serve his devotees and his devotees are eager to take his shelter. So this is the Lord's mercy. So I'll stop there. These are just a few of, uh, I have many more stories. But I thought I'd stop there. We can continue another day with further stories of Lord Nishringa Day. I'll tell one quick one, which I heard from the devotee who was personally there. This again was in Germany. And this again was in that very uh, nightclub type area called Wieperbahn. The devotees had gone there for Harinam. And so they were chanting. They were chanting and dancing and then they rounded the corner they came around the corner and on the other and when they came around the corner on the other side of the street on the same block was a group of very fierce looking <laughs> personalities and they were all intoxicated drinking away they saw the devotees and then one of them decided to come at the devotees so uh, the devotee who was there, he told me that, I just told the devotees, we just chant the Shringadev prayers. So some of the devotees ran away, but others stayed and started to chant. And this man was coming at them. He was a big guy and uh, he was crossing the street. And while he was crossing the street, he wasn't really watching so much where he was going. And there was a car coming and the car was driven and the person who was driving the car when he saw the devotees he became happy and started to turn his attention to the devotees while his car was moving not seeing the man who was walking right in front of his car so the rest of the story you can just imagine <laughs> so that was the uh, so one who chants the prayers of Lord Nishringadev is always protected from the, from the demons that are so profusely uh, inhabiting this age of Kali. I was just listening to Prabhupada's lecture today and he was describing, he was saying, this is the age of Kali. He said, the devotees are very few and the demons are not only numerous, but they're always increasing. But he said, do not worry. Just like Prahlad Maharaj did not worry, he simply took shelter of the Lord and by praying to the Lord, the Lord gives full and complete protection to his devotee. And Prabhupada went on and on to describe how the mercy of the Lord is available for those who take shelter. And the Lord has incarnated in this age as his name, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Okay, so we'll stop there and see if there's any comments or questions by 
devotees, any stories, or anything you would like to add? Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj, for showing us how merciful, how personal, how benevolent, and how loving Lord Narsingadev is uh, towards his devotees and reciprocates so marvelously with their prayers. And also those beautiful prayers by Shani Dev to Lord Narsingadev. Uh, maybe devotees would like to have uh, a copy of that. Dear devotees, if you would like to share your realizations about Lord Narsingadev or share pastimes or have questions, please do go ahead. Thank you. Yes, Raghupati Prabhu, please go ahead. Hare Krishna. Um, can everyone hear me? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please, some humble obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada, all glories to you. Jai Raghupati Ji, my obeisances to you. Hare Krishna. Um, I just wanted to share a, a, a quick story. Um, so um, I think in 2011, I appro approached Pankajamri Prabhu and I asked him for blessings um, that I, I wanted to do my Prabhu Academy and study on the Deity Worship course. And this was in England at um, Birmingham 24 Hour Gurthan, and he closed his eyes and he put his hands on his heart and he said, I pray to Lord Nishingadev to remove any obstacles in your way. And at that time, I was like, Jay, like, you know, I've got the blessings and hopefully something will happen. And within, I think it was within six months, um, I lost my job. I got made redundant. And at the time, I was like, Krishna, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I've, I've lost my job. Where am I going to get money from? And then I approached Guru Maharaj and I said, Maharaj, I've lost my job. What should I do? And um, Guru Maharaj, you said to me, I think you should go to my Mayapur and do the deity worship course. And at the time, I was in complete anxiety. But um, after I realized it was Pankajamri Prabhu and Lord Nishingadev's mercy that made that arrangement for, for me to go. And going there was the best, without a doubt, the best experience of my life and the happiest thing I've ever done. So I just wanted to share that story. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I didn't know about those prayers. but <laughs> I, I, actually, I actually forgot myself. And when Punk mm -hmm. Jambu passed away, and one of my friends reminded me that, that I approached him for blessings. So yeah, I was completely blown away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I remember when you were in Mayapur, you were that very happy to serve Radha Madhava. Yeah, I wish I could be back there. Mm. That'll happen. Okay. Thank you, Rabupati, for sharing that very personal Thank you very much. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, everyone. Um, I, I had one experience um, that I can share of, um, I don't remember how many years ago it was, but I had taken some medication. I took a pill and I was choking on the pill in my kitchen. And I remember like, kind of hanging over my sink, like just trying to, like just coughing and struggling. And I was calling for Krishna and I was saying, you know, Krishna, 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 and nothing was working. And then I, I just said, Jay Narsingadev, and, and like instantaneously, it felt like he um, just pierced the pill with his lotus nail because it just dissolved. And within a moment I could breathe again. Um, <laughs> <it was instant. laughs> Yeah. Our faith is reinforced when we take shelter of the Lord. Good. Be careful next time you take pills. <laughs> I 
Anyone else? Anasuya, do you have something you want to say? Um, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances all to us, to Shiva Prabhupada, to you. Um, no, I'm just appreciating hearing um, you and the God family speak. Thank you. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance of Sagar Shushila Prabhupada. We were missing you in Bhakti Sangha on Friday and then uh, we got to hear your class here. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Thank you. So, what happened was um, during uh, the childbirth of my second son. Uh, that was a, a C-section in Chennai and uh, they had given me anesthesia and somehow um, even after the childbirth, I was not, I was feeling so uneasy in the stomach and I was um, kept on throwing up even a drop of water uh, that I could take. The nurses and the doctor, they came and told me that if you continue like this, then you will have further complications. You will go into deep vein thrombosis and other things and they are like trying to threaten me to um, take me food but even if i if i just put even a drop of water i was throwing up and it was like coming out green and uh, i i felt myself fainting and then they put drips in the other thing this was after a day like 24 hours and more after the um, birth so i was trying to tell the shloka of um, Aham Vaishwa Naro Bhutva Prani Nam Deha Mashrutaha. But, you know, I was puffed up thinking that I can chant this loka and cure myself. That didn't work. Then I prayed to Narshingadev um, uh, uh, helplessly. And I prayed to him that, uh, um, I mean, uh, I would try my best to name uh, this son Prahlad so that I don't forget uh, this help if you could kindly help me to come out of this. Uh, I had prayed and then I had slept for 20 minutes or so. And then when I got up, I could feel such a uh, burning appetite in my stomach. Then since then, uh, there was no problem. Then after <laughs> three days, yeah, three days, I read in the local newspaper that there was a batch of anesthesia that was given to the surgeries that was causing a problem to some uh, people. And one lady um, lost her life because of that anesthesia was not, uh, uh, her body did not accept that. So this- That, that was the same anesthesia you got. Sorry, sorry, Mara. Was that the same anesthesia that you received? Yeah, could be, could be, because the doctors don't reveal that, but uh, it was by chance that it, after three days I had to, uh, somebody came and gave the newspaper that was in the local language. I don't usually go through much details, but that day I was going through and then this was not even a, a heading, but it was in the second or third page, but it was like an alarm that uh, they are seeing many uh, deaths of the mother uh, because of this batch of anesthesia. And mm. I could very well relate to that because I had the same symptoms. And I was not able to uh, even eat a bit, and uh, uh, they would use, they usually slipped into coma, and they were not able to recover. So mm -hmm. this again confirmed that this was like uh, maybe I was destined to go, and and uh, Nashingadev uh, saved me. But the point is that because of conditional life, um, I tend to forget this and many other things. The Lord uh, does time and again, time and again. So Wonderful. I. Did you name your son Palad? <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Uh, I mean, my in-laws were little, uh, not very happy, but finally they accepted. So, so at <laughs> least, uh, at least I could uh, yeah, remember this uh, benevolence by Lord Narsinghadev. Thank you. We're so happy to see that you're still with us. 
thank you maharaj for constantly you know uh, enlivening us by your association which doesn't have any adjective every time i fail to tell that but only we can say thank you from our hearts thank you for being such a dear devotee of lord vishnu today <laughs> No, I I'm not yet, but Narsinga Dev is so merciful. So by your association and your blessings, uh, I hope to uh, one day soon, Maharaj. I will come to get blessings from you. <laughs> oh, Krishna! No, Maharaj, I am not there. But you know, you are giving us your blessings by your association. An Thank example. You. Thank, Thank you. you. My obeisances to you and My best wishes. I'm sure that your life now is free from any obstacles. <laughs> so may I, you know, use it in always service of Vaishnavas and uh, Guru and Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada, all glory to you Maharaj. Sorry Maharaj, I'm in the car. Can you hear me? Yes, Diptesh. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I just, so thank you uh, very much for the wonderful narrations of how the Lord interacts with the devotees and, and in contact with Pankaj Angri Prabhu as well. And I was so fortunate two years ago when he was here for the visa renewal, I had an opportunity to serve him and take him to uh, different programs. And uh, although I had uh, heard and read the stories of past times, especially one where Narsinga Dev is telling the devotee, please do not be afraid of me when you are serving me and how he uh, was scared and he didn't wear anything. Uh, you know, he was basically forgot to wear uh, the clothes and he was in the temple and, and, and I, I, you know, when I read that, I was like, okay, you know, that can't be true. This is so, so personal when Narsingha Dev is telling so much specific things and, and he still has uh, the nails, uh, the marks on his body. So when he came two years ago, uh, we requested, uh, I requested uh, Pankaj Angri Prabhu to narrate uh, some pastimes and that is the one he narrated. And he narrated that in quite detail. And uh, then my faith was very firmly established for that particular pastime that Lord really that reciprocated to that extent to that devotee. And it was such nice uh, because Pankaj Angri Prabhu was narrating it. So it was really nectar. And, and, and for, for me, it was a really wonderful experience. And for all the other devotees as well who were there in that program. So you know, I just wanted to share my experience on that one end. He was very simple in his dealings. I found him very, very simple, very, very humble. Um, and he was such a, such a lovely, lovely, sincere devotee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was very sincere and very intimately connected with the Lord. And he had served the devotee so nicely by, by serving Lord Nishringadev. We, there were innumerable requests over the years and even, even recently for him to do pujas and special offerings to Lord Nisringadev to help devotees. There was one that was done especially for Jaipataka Maharaj when Jaipataka Maharaj had his crisis. And even after that, when he was still in the very... Uh, what we say, uh, uh, weak condition. We did, we did many, I was even there personally in Mayapur when this was happening. We did hours and hours and hours of prayers and homas and uh, various types of pujas to Lord Dasringadev. And right after that, Maharaj seemed to uh, pick up <laughs> Of course, we don't pray to the Lord for anything material, but the Lord likes to serve his devotees. So when we take shelter of the Lord, he is always inclined to serve his devotees. He likes to do that. He's specially empowered 
to give protection to his devotees, to remove material desires, and to reveal material illusions. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur explains these three things are the, the foremost services that the Lord performs towards the, the devotees. He gets rid of our material desires. He protects against material dangers. And he reveals the illusions that come by way of the external energy, which attract the conditioned souls to try to enjoy. He helps us see through these illusions so we are not enticed to somehow or other uh, go away from Krishna and try to fulfill our desires for material happiness. So he's very inclined, the Lord is very inclined. Yes, Maharaj. And, and he also, he yes, especially, especially in this age of Kali, he is the main deity because there are so many demons. <laughs> so many demons. Yes, please go ahead. <laughs> no, I think he also, because when my kids, they, my children met him, obviously, I mean, Pankaj Angri Prabhu, he's humble, uh, he, you know, he's very sincere, he talks very softly. And then he narrated the pastime of where they had to have guns and fight with the dacoits. And he really got excited when he was narrating that pastime. And my children were really amazed of how they were so bold and protected the deity, yet he appeared so humble and so 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 sincere. And he didn't so so you know he was talking about guns and he had the guns and he was hiding behind the curtains and so many things, so many things. And my children were really I I recorded that expression when he narrated that story because it was amazing. Yeah, when the thing is, when those Dakois attacked, the devotees were just trying to fight them. But yes. When they wanted to take away the deity of Srila Prabhupada and the deity of Radharani, that's when the devotees got really strong and started to fight back with guns. <laughs> they were not going to let them take Radharani and Prabhupada away. So. And right after that, Incident. That's when Atmatapna Prabhu went to South India, met the mystery from the Sankaracharya, Mott in South India, and arranged for the deity to be made. And then he, later he came to Mayapur. That incident was sparked sparked the, uh, the appearance of Lord Nishringadeva in Mayapur. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. That was nice. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, oh, thank you. Okay. You know, please may I narrate a small pastime of Lord Nashvidev? You? You have one? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Go ahead. We're waiting. Okay. This happened in uh, 2013. Um, I had uh, gone to Mayapur and just before I had gone, my mother had visited me here in America and she used to make flower garlands every day for my beautiful murti of uh, Lord Nashigade. So this is just to give you some background. So then I was there standing in front of Lord Nashigade. I think it was the first or second day I was there completely new to everything. And then Lord Nashindadeva asked me, where are my garlands? And I say, garlands? Uh, where shall I get garlands from? I don't know anything or anyone over here. I don't know where to find flowers. I don't know who to ask for making garlands for you. I said, you have to make your own arrangements to show me how to get garlands for you. I said like this. <laughs> that evening, one lady knocks on my door I open the door, she's a flower seller. And she holds up a garland and she says, Nashingadev? And from that day, I could get garlands every day for Lord Nashingadev. <laughs> That's a sweet pastime. <laughs> he was so kind to me, foolish and useless as I am. He only made I the arrangement. He, he's waiting for you to come back to this. So he can. Uh, he's waiting for you to return to Mayapur so you can, can do your service of giving him garments. 
Yes, Guru Bharat. I'm also waiting to go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare Krishna. Okay, we can stop here. Thank you very much, devotees. Tomorrow we'll have a special program. There will be a special personality who uh, MC the program. I won't be able to be here tomorrow, but please come on board for that program. And we'll see you all soon. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Bhagavan Sri Nishringa Dev. Sri Nishringa, Jaya Nishringa, Jai Jai Sri Nishringa, Palada Desha, Jaya Padma Mukha Padma Bringam, Ugram Virya Mahavishnu, Jwalantam Sarvatam Bukham Nishringa Vishinam Badram Nityam Namami Aham. Sri Nishringa Bhagavan Ki Jai. Thank you guys so much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. This was so wonderful. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.